Hi guys, it's Renee and Michael here. Hey guys, what's happening? So today we are going to cover uh, an exciting topic that I actually don't see a lot about on YouTube, and that is on-site printing at events. Yeah, so we were uh, lucky enough uh, to be approached by True Chicago, which is the uh, so I guess what you call me like the tourist board uh, here yeah. in Chicago, and they asked us to do a print on site uh, service or event for them uh, for an event they were holding for other um, tourist boards, basically. And so uh, they reached out, asked if that was something that we would be interested in, and of course we said yes without any experience or knowledge right. of how we were kind of going to get it done. But it's important when you're in business, you know, say yes and then figure out how you're going to get it done later. So. so. That's our approach. Right. So this, uh, as Michael said, this was our first time doing something like this, and it turned out to be a pretty big success. Mm -hmm. And we want to share some of our experiences with you uh, in case you have something like this come up where someone asks you to do on-site printing. So the first part that we want to talk about is what do you need to let the organizer know when they approach you about the event. So the first thing is you have a couple of different options that you can choose from in terms of pricing. Mm -hmm. So we actually did a flat rate where we included uh, 250 shirts in the rate. The other option that you could do is to bill them for the number of shirts that you press at the event. Now, the, the problem with the second option or the challenge is that means you need to keep track of what you print at the event, but also that means you're not getting paid until after the event. So you are uh, putting all the money up, up front. So the way that we went, uh, we did a flat rate for 250 shirts and they paid us in advance. So that's certainly always helpful because one, you know, you're you know you're not going to be stiff, and it can be hard to uh, kind of uh, wrangle people at the end of events and stuff yeah. like that. So at this particular event, they were offering uh, alcoholic drinks and food and stuff like that, and it was really a, a networking thing. So our point of contact uh, was scattered. Yeah. She was all yeah, over the place. Yeah. Not to say that she wasn't great or attentive when we needed her, but when it was time for us to break down and the event was kind of uh, winding down, she was off, I'm sure, doing you know her job or doing you know whatever she needed to do. And I could only imagine you know how uh, difficult that would have been to try to settle up at the end of, of mm -hmm. the event when everyone's kind of running around crazy and things like that. So personally, I, I think it was... Uh, a really good move to, to go mm -hmm. with the uh, flat fee yeah. prepaid up front, especially for this first time around. So, you know, we don't have any you know, kind of bad taste in our mouths for on-site events. Right. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Then the second thing oh, that... I'm sorry. Oh. But if I could just mention, although uh, there is a little bit more potential in the amount of shirts pressed, because I do believe they may have had more attendees than they were told us. Mm -hmm. And so towards the end of the event, there were people who wanted, uh, who still wanted shirts and a few people who came back once or twice. Yeah. And so since we were prepaying, you know, we weren't, you know, really hard on rules or, you know, you know, telling anybody they couldn't get seconds and, and things like that. So I do think we may, could have made a, a bit more money towards the end of the show if we were, uh, you know, kind of printing as we go. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just, you know, depends on uh, your event, you know, how many they want to start off with, I, I think is, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, a good starting point on determining how you're going to price that event. But, you know, there, there was some opportunity, I think, to keep going because people end. were really interested uh, in what we were doing and mm -hmm. getting a free T-shirt. So, and, and I want to say we maybe walked home with, Maybe you think 30 shirts maybe that we brought as extras or? Um, yeah, maybe 10 or 15 oh, 10 that 15 we had. 10 or 15 shirts, yeah. yeah. So I, we definitely could have, you know, uh, pressed those shirts. There were enough, there was enough interest, I, I should say, uh, at the table or at the booth and then tried to settle up with the, our point of contact later. But, you know, we had already just kind of settled on the 250 and we, we you know, we yeah. didn't want to, you know, go outside of that. So just, just a little uh, something to remember, you know, when you're thinking about mm -hmm. your price. So the next thing we want to cover is what do you need to tell the organizer in terms of what you need to print on site? 
So something to consider is how much space will you need? So for us, we took two heat presses, one for each of us, and two uh, portable stands, which hopefully we'll be able to put a picture in the comment of what it looks like. But uh, so we took those two stands, two heat presses and a four foot table. The organizer provided a six foot table, which was really helpful. Um, you need to let them know you need access to electricity to plug in your heat presses. And as we learned, probably two separate outlets yeah. because <laughs> yeah. they kept blowing a fuse when we got there. Yeah. Um, you will need good lighting so you can see what you're doing and uh, we didn't think about this until later but you might want to let the organizer know in advance that you want to build in a break somewhere very important a 10 or 15 minute break somewhere in in the middle of the event um, the other thing is if you can, we brought a portable garbage can, but you'll need a garbage can for each station. We took transfers to make it easy, so you're going to have paper to throw away. And um, two chairs, so if you, you know, need a chair to sit or something like that. So, um, just so that they know how much space you're going to need. So we, we told them like 50 square feet or something like that so that they will know to have enough space in the booth. So those are some of the things that um, you want to mention up front to the organizer so that everybody's on the same page about what you need. Yeah, I, I would agree. And with this, I would say, make sure that you're particular. You know, if a company is at the point where they're reaching out to you to, to do this live event, uh, then I would say, you know, you're, I'm sure you're, you know, probably already uh, in the clear, you know, with them getting the job. But, you know, be, be bold at, at this point if you need to, to let them know, hey, you know, we need X amount of space or, or we need this, you know, 15 to 20 minute break uh, at a certain point or, you know, let them know on, about uh, you know turnaround. So we were lucky enough to be able to use Class Assault Ink transfers and our heat press, which only takes about 15 to 20 seconds uh, per mm -hmm. t-shirt to complete. So it was really fast for us, but say for example, if you're doing screen printing uh, on site and you actually have to run your shirts through a manual dryer, that's gonna increase the, the turnaround time you know, for each shirt. So mm -hmm. the way we had it is there was a four foot table in front of us and then we had mannequins displaying the shirts and then people just kind of walked up and Renee and I were back to back to each other and you know facing our presses and we each had a design to press and people would just kind of walk up tell us uh, which design they wanted and then either Renee and I would uh, pull from the pre-folded t-shirts you know just throw it out real quick line up the transfer press it fold it really quickly and give it to the customer for about maybe 30 seconds mm -hmm. uh, per person, 30 seconds uh, for the turnaround. And there, like I said, there were a lot of people at this event and we were one of the uh, kind of highlight uh, events there. And mm -hmm. so everyone was right in our face and was building a line. And so if we weren't working fast, I could see it kind of becoming a problem. You know, everyone would have been just standing right in front of our booth and there wouldn't have been a lot of space for people for traffic to go back and forth and things like that. So, you know, make sure you're very clear uh, with your host on what you're gonna need uh, for, for this particular type of event. You know, I wouldn't say don't uh, force yourself to fit into their mode, but to, you know, tell them to allow you to have the space that you need, you know, whatever it is. Um, because uh, even with Renee and I being back to back, with both the heat presses on, it got pretty warm got yeah, yeah. In, in our little area. And so uh, I think it worked out for us for this particular event, mm -hmm. but I certainly wouldn't be opposed to, to having more space and to uh, having you know, more electrical outlets. Uh, we were all on a strip you know, with a Christmas tree and mm -hmm. uh, decoration mm -hmm. lights and everything else, and we kept blowing it and stuff. So you know, make sure you're, you're firm and, and steady uh, on what you uh, tell your host you're going to need for the particular event. Yeah. The other tip I would give you is uh, no more than two designs. Uh, 
So, you know, with this being our first event, we weren't as firm on that as we probably should have been. So they requested three designs and um, one design, it just- It was a patch. It was a patch. <laughs> And so if you're an apparel decorator, you probably have run into this before where the customer wants something that's basically a big square and it's not going to feel good on the shirt because there's no area of relief in the design and it's just like one big patch of ink. So with those, we ended up pressing those in advance and bringing it to the event with us. But everything, it just would have been a lot smoother, I think, with two designs two. rather than three. Mm -hmm. And um, the third design wasn't that popular. People started to take it when the options when we ran, ran out. out. But yeah, it was just um, just, just a big patch that we did in printed uh, EcoSolve vinyl that literally went, you know, the full chest. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it just, just wasn't great, especially when you stack it up next to a uh, plastic salt ink transfer. Yeah. It's like, oh wow, this is really nice. And of course the uh, ink designs had a lot of space. They were wording mostly. Yeah. So there was a lot of space in between each ink element, so which gave heavy. it a lot of relief. Yeah. yeah, so it wasn't really heavy on the shirt or, or anything like that. And so yeah, I, I agree. We probably should have either stayed firm uh, with two designs and express how a patch design would feel and kind of look or represent uh, to their customers. Or the thing that we didn't think of at the time and obviously thought of um, after would be to charge more for a sublimation. Yes, yes. Because we were doing these all on white shirts. White shirts. Uh, so we could, instead of doing uh, eco solvent transfers, uh, we could, or what am I saying, eco solvent heat transfer vinyl we could have done sublimation. Now, obviously there is a greater cost uh, involved in mm -hmm. that. And I honestly believe they probably would have gone for it yeah. had we presented that option to mm -hmm. them, especially since it was just one design and you know not the uh, entire order that was mm -hmm. going to be a, a higher rate. So, you know, think about that, you know, take a, a breath or, or a step back and think of uh, logistically what's gonna work best because yeah. we did a lot of pre-pressing because we knew this particular design would take longer to do on site. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to do two it's presses. Nice yeah, mm -hmm. you have to pre-press and then let it cool off a little bit, peel the adhesive mm -hmm. back and off, then press it again. And so that just would have turned into a, a mess. But had we uh, done sublimation for them, then each design would have been as equally nice and yeah. equally uh, presentable to, to all the customers. So, And that would have been an opportunity for us to upcharge a bit. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. that's a little something uh, that we, we missed there. Um, but uh, other than that, I did want to touch base on logistics. Yes. Uh, so where we were, this event was in a hotel. And this is, I guess, maybe what they would call the reception area or convention center that was in the basement of this particular hotel. And our point of contact was just someone who was just renting the space. So they didn't know exactly you know the the best method uh, to load things in and stuff like that and so i think their only suggestion to us was to go through the main lobby which if you know you're, you're moving equipment and stuff like that you don't want to be dragging your stuff uh through the lobby and mm -hmm. it's usually not the most accessible in terms of how wide the door frames yeah. are and uh curbs and, and stuff like that and so my number one tip for this is when you're off-site anywhere uh, hotel, convention center, uh, things where you know things can be moved in and out of buildings. Find someone who actually works there uh, to talk to. And that was our saving grace. Uh, mm -hmm. Our point of contact was great, but they just didn't have the best plan uh, for us to, to bring our things in. And uh, even, I believe one person even mentioned using the freight elevator uh, inside mm -hmm. the convention center, which didn't work or you know wasn't working at the time. And we parked about maybe a block away in terms of sidewalk space. Mm -hmm. It was across the street from the hotel, but obviously curbs. Yeah. So having to walk back there and forth. There's no ramps. Yeah, so. there's no ramps and stuff. So that you know was a block away moving heat presses on our little uh, hand cart. And when what we should have done and what I'm going to advise to you is to do a quick dry run. You know, if this place isn't too far from you, hopefully you're not traveling, you know, an hour or, or two mm -hmm. out of your way to get to this event. But if you can and you know it's a building, do a dry run. 
Yeah. You know, go there first, see where all of your points of uh, entrance are, see if there is a loading dock that people are using more often. Uh, so this is something I learned kind of working in bars and restaurants and things is that they may have something that looks like their loading dock or their loading area that isn't in use. Mm -hmm. And so all the employees are using something else. You're thinking, oh, hey, here's an elevator. And the whole time they don't even use it or that mm -hmm. may not be the most convenient way into the building. Uh, and so what we found out or what I found out when I was unloading is there was a separate entrance that technically that looks like it's not even attached to the hotel. And that's where all the uh, deliveries come. They have a security guard there. They check you in. And what I could have done is even drove into this place, oh, okay. uh, unloaded directly in the, the little lot or the parking center, and then just taken the uh, service elevators down to, to where we were. Mm -hmm. So... Um, definitely, if you can, I would suggest do, do a dry run and find someone who's working there. You know, maybe someone who's in uh, a little jumpsuit or something like that. Someone who looks like they're uh, part of the maintenance crew or uh, cleaning crew. Those people know how to get in and out of wherever they need to go without being seen. And that's basically what you want, you know, as someone who's loading in for an event. All right. So, but all in all, um, we were super pleased with how it turned out. Yeah. I really feel like we were one of the most popular booths oh, at yeah, the definitely. entire mm -hmm. convention. Yeah. And Between us and the alcohol, I'm sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. Everyone who came by had a little something in their hand, had, had a little, little margarita drink. or a drink in their hand, but people stayed in that line and waited right. uh, to get their t-shirt. Right. Make sure you take your business cards. We handed out a lot of business Lots cards. Of business cards yeah. uh, people were super interested in the concept of printing at their event. Um, we sold out in like two hours, yeah, so which was crazy. and it was a four hour event, mm -hmm. and so pretty non stop um, actually. Once we got set up, once we, we got going, going, yeah. So, but overall, it was a lot of fun. Um, I would say one of the key takeaways just don't be shy about your price yeah, <laughs> because. Oh, Believe me, you're going to work for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's something we actually had a hard time finding online was maybe like pricing structure or uh, right. fees How for other people, people Yeah, who, who do this. And uh, what we kind of came to find out is that I want to say I mean, our price may have been probably on the low end uh, for what oh, most people yeah. uh, would do. And But again, this was our first time and we weren't really quite sure you know, exactly how this went, but Whatever you're thinking, you know, if you're approached with this or you're pitching uh, this idea to, to someone, go a little bit higher, I would mm -hmm. think, you know, kind of raise your price because this is a premium service and an entertainment uh, that you're providing all in one. Yeah. So they could have uh, hired us to do these shirts just in bulk, right? And right, we could have done them here in our shop and we could have delivered them. They could have just been, you know, handing them out or, you know, however they want to do. They could have included them in their uh, welcome packet, you know, with mm -hmm. their tote bag and things that people get at these conventions. And we wouldn't have been there <clears throat> and they still would have had their shirts, but they wouldn't have had the entertainment factor. Right. And that's what people really like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They, I think a lot of people didn't know how t-shirts were made or did, just fascinated with the whole idea that, mm -hmm. you know, I can tell you which shirt I want and get it in like exactly. a minute, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Uh, and then uh, it was warm, you know, people were so, you know, just kind of blown away about that. Obviously, if you're heat pressing this shirt, it's going to be hot for a few seconds after you uh, pull it off. And so everyone just thought they were, you know, the funniest, oh, hey, hot, you know, fresh off the press yeah. and all that other type of stuff. And so, and what this also did was allowed our point of contact to gather uh, more contact information. So if you've been to these conferences, you may be familiar with scanning the badge. And so people mm -hmm. always say, can I scan your badge? And that's to get your contact information in their database so that they can reach out to you in the future. Mm -hmm. And at this particular event, it was so, the floor was vast. So having a singular point of contact or a funnel almost to drive people to their booth so that they can scan each and every person that waited for a t-shirt mm -hmm. had to have been invaluable yeah. for our point of yeah. contact. I'm they sure were able they to strike up conversations with people, have mm -hmm. whole, you know, talks for maybe a minute or two before it was their turn to, to get their shirt in line. So mm -hmm. that was a huge bonus that uh, in the future, I believe we would kind of push or uh, add to our negotiation and say, well, hey, you know, this is gonna be uh, a hit, uh, a feature at your event. 
and that's you know also where some of that yeah. cost is, is going to come into yeah. so definitely whatever i would say maybe price out the order for what you would do in store and then of course cover your travel parking lunch mm -hmm. and then just you know whatever specific uh you know additional charge you want to mm -hmm. add on to that that you feel is sufficient for yeah. you so and your team so guys that's it for today we hope you enjoyed it yeah, um yeah. please if you have a chance please like and subscribe we would love to have you come back and check out our youtube channel yeah and if uh, you have done any printing on site events let us know below how it went any tips or hints that you may have uh, for anyone in the future that's uh, looking to get into this absolutely so thanks for joining us bye bye